going to help you folks is you know like if you find yourself on a big snow slope and you're moving up and you're gradually getting higher and higher is just be aware that you're getting higher and higher and the potential for hazard is increasing um, you might want to rehearse in your mind a couple of times you know like grabbing your ice axe taking it from that transitional pit making sure you got a really good grip because this is quite often a last ditch effort right grabbing that axe and then holding on to it once you start sliding, um, you can't be losing that because then you'll have nothing in your hands whatsoever. Um, so just think about that as you're moving sort of thing. It's like, what if? What would I do? Now I want to move my ice axe again. I'll move it from a, when I'm in a position of stability. And then I can... Now I have another point of contact with the snow. And then I build a nice positive step, and by that I mean I kind of build it so that it leans in towards the, uh, the slope and not, you know, quite flat. And if somebody's coming up behind me, I encourage them to sort of build on that. So if you have two or three people, or four or five people coming up and you're crossing a snow slope, in the end, they're walking on a really nice platform. So, then I move up, move my axe at a point you know, when I'm nice and stable. Okay, there's gonna come a time, you know, if I'm using the terrain correctly, where, you know, I angle out, but I'm gonna to have to turn around. And everybody behind me is gonna to have to turn around also. And so I take the extra time, you know, another extra second, so that, bang. Everybody else can make a nice transition, because, if there's one place where people are going to make a mistake, it's going to be there. So, very supportive. Now I decide I'm going to make this transition again. I'm thinking about all the people behind me. You know, while I'm doing that, probably this is one way you could do it. Just lean in. Okay, and then the people walking up behind me. are gonna have a pretty good experience. And if you're just, you know, on a trip, you guys can switch leads once you get tired, because it's always a little bit more work up front. And the people back get quite a bit of a rest, so you can switch up leads every once in a while. Okay, the age-old question of which direction do you carry your ice axe? When the pick is forward, <coughs> um, the adds, which is the wider part of the blade, is comfortably placed against the palm and it feels pretty good, you know, when you're walking and doing lots of steps. Um, the disadvantage for me is, I guess, I would take a modification for me to, now that I think about it, it's not that much of a disadvantage. I could bring my axe across, put my hand in, and uh, self-arrest. For me, personally, this is more, you know, the way I've been doing it traditionally, but now I'm kind of rethinking a little bit, is carrying with the pick to the back, so that when I go into the self-arrest, you know, and I've, des I've decided I'm in a really exposed position, <coughs> and if I'm, I were to blow out, it would be a bad thing, so I want to, you know, stop that. Because the main thing about self-arresting is, is it, you know, letting a slip stop it from becoming a fall or picking up too much momentum and what you want to do is bring your axe around get in there as quick as you can 
and uh, stop yourself from moving. And the thing too is this, uh, you got to have a really solid grip on your tool before you throw it in. Don't just throw it in with one hand and expect it to stay there because it'll get ripped out of your hand if it bites into the snow. All right? So you want to have a position where you know you want to have a real solid grip and this sort of thing has to happen really really quickly so and this again once again I can't in, in enough times tell you it's like re rehearse in your mind what you're gonna do before you have to do it so, <clears throat> so the question often arises um, whether you should have a leash on your ice axe or not like a permanent leash, you know, I'm not a big fan of those because I'm, all, I'm constantly changing the direction of my axe. And so if it's leash is around my wrist, um, you know, I'll have a tendency not to as freely move my axe to the position that, you know, it's supposed to be and whichever the uphill hand is or whatever the situation arises. Occasionally, though, you will get into steep terrain where you're going to feel like you do need to have a leash. And I always carry, you know, as part of any of my alpine kit if i have an axe i have one of these double length runners and then i just sort of girth hitch through the top so then i just take the strands bring them down to mid shaft just go once around my tool and then run the end through and that's all i do because i like it to sort of bite down on the shaft a little bit so it stays in place if i'm weighting it and then i know this is a little bit long so I simply just build a chicken hook here at the bottom and leave a little bit more because I'm going to do a couple of wraps. And I just put a loop at the bottom to shorten up the sling and I have a place to clip in if I get all nervous. All right. Then I can just slip my hand in. One, two, three. And now I've got, you know, it's difficult for my hand to get out of there. I've got a a uh, sling attached to the top of my tool and I carry it with me and you know I can quickly use it if I'm using it in steeper more technical terrain um, and I happen not to have uh, you know a technical ice axe with me it'll it'll work and then I got a place I can clip in you know any one of these spots down at the bottom uh, with my ice my ice axe buried into the ice and build an anchor or do whatever I want to do so it, the other thing too is it'll uh, you go back into traveling mode and just give it a shake and this, this goes back up and down and travels freely on your tool. So you have all the security. So if you're back walking for a second and then back steep climbing, you've got her. I love the pound and the hoops. I love engines that roar And I love the wild music The waves on the shore And the spiral perfection of a heart When it soars And I love my sweet There's roads and there's roads and they come can't you hear it? Roads of the earth, roads of the spirit. But the best roads of all, all the ones that aren't certain. One of those is where you find me till they drop. The wind moan in the bright diamond sky. These mountains are waiting, brown, green, and dry. I'm too old for the turn, but I use it anyway. I'll be a child of the wind until the end of my days. A little. In a big universe, sometimes 
Sometimes it looks blessed, sometimes it looks cursed. Depends on what you look at, and obviously. Yeah. <laughs> 